So, you know, Kunal, I've been doing some detective-like investigation. So, I realized that you have been missing for an entire week. And at the same time, Haas Racing has also announced that they're talking to drivers, present and past, for the 2016 race seats. Tell us, Kunal, is there a connection there? Ah, well, uh, female Sherlock Holmes amongst us, <laughs> it is. You know, just the way I've been trained all these years to talk to the world of Formula 1 media, I'm going to say it the same way. I cannot accept or deny the speculation. You, know, <laughs> you, you just have to wait for the news to unfold. But the truth actually is that I am a few years away from my super license, even if I was to resume racing. But to be honest, you know, I don't think that actually matters. And why is that exactly? You mean I'll get to drive without a super license? Close. So given um, Haas Racing's possible competitiveness or lack of it in their debut season, I think it's fair to say that they'd be as slow as a GP2 car in Formula 1. Uh -huh. So basically that means is that you're only one year away, Kunal, from driving for Haas Racing. Oh, well, that's uh, something I didn't think of. Come on, get to work, Kunal. Talk less, race more. You can do it. <laughs> but I should also tell you that Haas Racing also say that they're talking to Vern, Gutierrez, Hulkenberg. And who else do you think they're talking to? Well, you know, uh, your guess is as good as mine, but I wouldn't be surprised if they approached a certain Pastor Maldonado too. You mean his sponsors? Ah, uh, uh, well, you know, his F1 is Formula <laughs> 1's expensive. So you can't really ignore a Maldonado or, well, in this case, his sponsors. But on the plus side, you know, having Maldonado on the team is always such an asset. I mean... You mean you keep making more assets to go racing because he crashes them? Is that what you say? Not exactly, but I'll give that to you. But just having Maldonado in your team, Kunal, always ensures that the TV cameras are panned right onto you. You know, they wow. don't want to miss a single thing he does. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that means that Haas could get a lot of coverage in their debut season <laughs> if they were to sign up a pastor Maldonado. But, but you know what? I am not surprised that Maldonado blames media for his crash in Aldo image. I mean, we take some credit. Of the, course we do. The Inside Line <laughs> F1 podcast takes a lot of credit for Crashter. And credit is always due where it's worth. And just the way he's most worthy of the moniker, we are most worthy of taking the credit as well. We love Pastor Joe. <laughs> but there is news of Haas Racing actually shortlisting drivers, Kunal. So now they're down to a list of five drivers. What do you actually think their criteria is? Interesting. Uh, I've never been asked this question before, but mm -hmm. now that you do, I think the first criteria would be that you have to be thrown out by a top team or a, in this case, it would be won by Red Bull Racing. The mm -hmm. second could possibly be that you got to be consistently ignored by top Formula 1 teams. And in this case, it would be in Hulkenberg. Oh dear. And the third one, very crucial. You should be able to attract and already have sponsors from your home country. In this case, it would be Gutierrez, okay? And I don't know, whatever happened to Haas's publicity of an all-American lineup because we want to take Formula 1 to the front pages on the US of A. So you mean speed actually isn't a criteria? Well, I wish it was and I'd love to see teams organize a shootout to select the drivers. That would be absolute fun. Wow. Meanwhile, the Finnish Grand Prix is in the offing, 2017 Helsinki. Well, as long as the Finns can afford it, and I also hear that it's going to be a street circuit. Wow, that seems awesome to me. I mean, of course, I am a fan of the Finn in Formula 1. Uh-huh, And, uh -huh. <laughs> and we've had a Finn on the grid for the last two decades or so, Kunal. So there's been Hakkinen, Raikkonen, Kovalainen, and now Botas. Oh, that is an interesting statistic. And you know what's more interesting, in fact? Uh, so more often than not, a Finn on the grid has been replaced by another Finn. So for example, you had Kimi Raikkonen, who replaced uh, Mika Hakkinen and McLaren. And now, of course, there are talks of Botas replacing Raikkonen at Ferrari. I didn't know you've actually beaten me 70, 30, halfway through on this podcast already. <laughs> you time, start getting time used for me to, to that, come. Kanal. Yeah, or rather time for me to strike back. <laughs> but talking of street circuits in Finland, Pirelli has a new street compound called the Super Duper Super Soft. Wow, say that again. Super Duper Super Soft. That's my version of it. Formula 1 likes, thankfully, something simple, which is a Super Super Soft. Okay. But 
Not surprisingly, the teams don't know where to test that new tyre. Oh wow, what a major problem. But can't they just go and test it in Singapore? Doesn't that make sense? Well, but this is Formula 1. The Singapore solution to me is most sensible and cost effective. The teams will be there, drivers will be there, engineers will be there and we'll have a street circuit. But that is also possibly why it's ruled out. It doesn't meet the standards of Formula 1. To meet the standards of Formula 1, the sport will specifically seem to meet in a month, possibly January of 2016 to test it. There is talk that they will test the street tyre on a non-street circuit in Sepang. Now that is the perfect Formula 1 solution, my friend. So. <laughs> right. And on the note of testing, so Lewis Hamilton has been invited by Rossi, Lorenzo and Yamaha to test their MotoGP bike. That would also mean that Rosberg somewhere is sitting and furiously texting them to give him a test. To <laughs> But you know, at this rate, I won't be surprised if Hamilton wants to test the NASCAR, then one day he'll get up and say, I want to fly to the moon. I'll go drive the Mars rover on Mars. I believe he's just getting supremely bored of the competition that he is not facing in Formula 1 at the moment. I remember Kimi Raikkonen racing a lawn mower. So let's see if Hamilton <laughs> can top that. But, but other news, so Mercedes could actually emerge to be the only engine manufacturer who could get through the 2015 season without a single engine penalty. Because it seems like Ferrari might soon pick up a penalty, Kunal. Well, what's impressive is that you read on the technical news as well. But what is of course not impressive is that how is it that the other manufacturers have seemed to get it so wrong? To add to what you just said, Renault is confused right now and they're taking the time to figure whether they'll be Red Bull Renault or Renault Renault or just Renault or leave the sport. And in this whole confusion of Renault, Sauber wants Renault engines in 2016. I am absolutely confused. I don't know makes what, no sense I don't know what <laughs> they're thinking. Because, you know, to think of it, just two weeks back, they announced a 2016 driver lineup. Correct. Okay. Now, now if they announce that we're going to get Renault engines in 2016. I kid you not, Felipe Nasser and Marcus Ericsson will think they were shortchanged. The purposely they were announced before the engine switch was announced. Could be a conspiracy then. <laughs> but there's also news that Mercedes is now willing to supply to Red Bull in 2016. So does this change the equation? Well, it changes the equation where there's a balance. So on one end, Red Bull has a Renault engine which they claim is non-competitive. On the other hand, they claim that Ferrari is willing to give them an engine. And now there is Red Bull willing to give them an engine. But I tell you what, and I have written about this with much success, a, a post which is done really well on my blog, that the sport will be fixed instantaneously if every single car on the grid gets a Mercedes engine. Anyway, technical news aside, since we're not really having any action on track, we're going to have a competition here, Kunal. Really? I am not competing with you, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is no competition there anyway. But anyway, so we are going to pick which driver is having the most awesome summer break of 2015. Oh, well, Come roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even that list, I can tell you I'm going to top. You don't know this and not a lot of people know this, but I spent 10 days in a forest in the western part of India, in a place called Digatpuri, by myself. It was absolutely bliss. Wow. But I'm very keen to hear what you have researched about the other drivers. No, but your radio silence aside. So we had um, Ricciardo. He was posting pictures of lemon cakes and himself riding his Vespa through the summer. You know, that to me is where the difference in class lies in Formula 1 these days. So the Mercedes drivers are getting a Yamaha to go racing on. <laughs> And the Red Bull drivers are getting a Vespa. Oh, God. <laughs> and meanwhile, Lewis Hamilton, he's partying with Rihanna in the Barbados. Well, it just goes to show that it's his season. You can't beat him on track or off it. Max Verstappen, he's spending the summer, Kunal beat this, getting his driver's license. And in his free time? Playing video games. You know, I just want to imagine what will happen if he fails his road car driving oh, no. license test. <laughs> Jensen Batten and his wife, not such a good summer shutdown for them. They got gassed and robbed. And he's one of the biggest ambassadors of the sport. Is that why he continuously becomes an easy target? A few years ago, he was attacked in Brazil. You know, 
I really thank God that he's okay and so is Jessica. I mean, okay, let me put it this way. I really thank God that Jessica is okay and so is Jensen, okay? Maybe at this moment, they would have thought that instead of practicing yoga, they should have practiced martial arts together, <laughs> okay? But I'm surprised. It seems like an easy, he's an easy target. He got attacked in Brazil, like you said. He got attacked in France. And they, you know, they, they claim that uh, he got up with some bit of stomach ache and there was some sort of a gaseous feeling. And I sure. do know from my friends in Great Britain that beans is their favorite staple. Oh, no, I don't know where you're going with that. <laughs> but apart from all of this, I can tell you that there is a high chance Jensen Button is taking acting lessons to co-host Top Gear. That could be good news. That could be good news for a lot of fans. Meanwhile, Romain Grosjean on the beach with family. Now, we do know Kunal that he'd said that if there are any more races in 2016, he could well be divorced. <laughs> so I'm very glad that he's taking his vacations with his family seriously. Yeah, you know, and I'm sure he went to some chapel out there, wherever he's on whichever beach. And he was praying, saying, God, please make Renault buy Lotus and let them retain the all-French combo. Wow. <laughs> Sebastian Vettel. You know, given the fact that he has not much internet presence, we don't actually know what he's up to. Yeah, I love that about our quadruple world champion. He's untraceable on the internet. <laughs> But we do know that Sebastian Vettel has been complaining that there's little or no camaraderie between modern Formula 1 drivers. Mm, wow, that's extremely, extremely... Strange. Strange, because the executioner of the Multi-21 is actually seeking friends in the paddock. I mean, <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> that seems very strange indeed. I think the best way for him to make friends would be to go to Felipe Massa and say, you know, Massa, you drove really well in 2008. Here's one of my trophies. You know, you were, you were a world champion that year. <laughs> and probably give up his seat next year for Nico Hulkenberg <laughs> saying, Debut Lamar, when come, you know, take my seat in, in, in Ferrari. We'll, we'll share our duties for the Scuderia. But I don't see that happening, Kunal. So I don't think Vettel's going to have friends in the paddock anytime soon, unfortunately. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carlos Sainz. Wondering on how he's the most overtaken driver in 2015. He has been overtaken 32 times this season. That's some sort of record. You know, I'm going to take his side here. Given the hype around his teammate Verstappen, let's not forget that Sainz is also the top four overtakers of 2015. Wow, that's a man on the move. And talking of Verstappen and Sainz, one of their predecessors from the Red Bull Young Driver program, uh, Jaime Alburswari, you know, my heart goes out to him. He got dropped by uh, Red Bull. He was trying to figure a way to get into Formula 1 still at the ripe age of 21. Then he did Formula okay. E. And now at the age of 25, he suddenly sees his license being suspended because he fainted during the Russian Grand Prix of Formula E or something of that effect. Oh dear. And you know what? I don't know what is it with Spanish drivers and their knack of having mysterious accidents. Wow. Now that is some fodder for us to brood on as we wait for Spa. Something for mo more for me to investigate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. The female Sherlock Holmes, Mithila, and I thank you very much for tuning in. Follow us, rate us, review us, share us. Listen to us. And keep racing. See you.